story of uh, him uh, saving the life of his platoon. He was a sergeant, and to save his men, uh, a hand grenade was thrown in, and he put it was thrown in like they were in a foxhole. You know, they were in a bunker, and a hand grenade was thrown in, and to save their lives, he threw his body on top of it, and he took the explosion, and he was killed, and he saved the lives of his men. So he is a war hero, and this was in the Vietnam War, okay, in the 60s. Then actually, this, he, he passed away in September, September 6, 1967, Rodney Davis. Now, he really, Rodney Davis, has brought more people to this cemetery than anybody else because this was such a uh, traumatic event and powerful event and, and, and sacrificing, self-sacrificing act. You know, even though there are many, many other people uh, of historical note, really everybody uh, in, in this cemetery, you know, some maybe more than others. So you see it's recounted, you know, uh, in detail. This, what, the, what happened is recounted in detail. And this is a beautiful, beautiful uh, monument. Now, you know, uh, where is Nassim? On the other side of it. <laughs> so, Nassim, you remember seeing his picture at L.H. Williams where we work out? Yes, sir. See, you remember his picture? It's in the lunchroom? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, y'all ready to keep moving a little bit? Okay. Now all of these that have the uh, these types of graves are, are, are um, war veterans, you know. These right here. Yeah. They all have that design and that kind of block. That kind of block font. Now, why would families place them here versus like the memorial cemeteries? Is that a choice? You know. Probably because they, this is the family cemetery. Okay. For so many people out of Pleasant Hill, this was the place to bury your people. Okay. Yeah. Versus like the Arlingtons or the Milledgeville Memorial Cemetery. Right. Did we say the same thing? Did we even have a military for blacks? That's true. I don't know. But I know a lot of veterans are buried over here. Uh, does anybody know the Quartermans? I don't know the Quartermans. So I, that's something we got to come back and learn. Huh? They're all black veterans over here. Okay, um, this grave right up here, you sometimes you hear about Cleopatra Love and the beautiful house that she lived in on uh, Monroe Street. And Rudy Mendez is renovating that house now. Uh, but Cleopatra Love, uh, very uh, attractive, elegant woman. Uh, this is where she's buried. And, you know, they were pretty wealthy people, very, um, very nice lifestyle and representative of uh, wanting the best for your family uh, in, uh, in making and particularly in Pleasant Hill. What did she do for a living? I don't know what Miss Love did. I think she did adopt um, Ozzie Bell McKay. Okay. Ozzie Bell McKay uh, grew up under her, and of course Ozzie Bell McKay is one of the civil rights activists, uh, and she really uh, thought a whole lot of Miss Love, okay. we lo you know, and uh, stayed in that house until she passed away on uh, Monroe Street, okay. She's right down from uh, Booker T. Washington Center. Now right down here is probably one of the most important gravestones that we have mainly from a historical standpoint, kind of a, kind of an anchor. And um, for what he represented, he represented a period, uh, and that's Jefferson Long. Uh, United States Congressman Jefferson Long. And now he was the first black man in the history of America to speak to Congress. And he was a tailor out of Macon, Georgia, right. a very accomplished businessman. And yeah, he taught himself to read. Well, he was born in 1870. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, no, I think I think I'm wrong on that. Let me let, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Uh, yeah, yeah. He where where do you see that? 1836, right there. There we go. As I knew he was before he was during slavery time. Yeah. 1836, and you look how he lived to 1901. 
that's a deep period of life because he came through the reconstruction he saw the civil war and then he saw reconstruction and then he saw reconstruction overturned mm -hmm. and he in fact he was a part of reconstruction being overturned because he served in congress during that period and then they were expelled out of uh out of congress mm -hmm. and uh many of them but he was a tailor his son was a tailor and uh thank you brother and um he also something else i wanted to say but he was a mason he was a mason, and uh, he was in that early lodge, that central uh, city lodge that's down on Middle Street that's going to be torn down in just a little bit uh, with the highway. But um, he, um, and of course, they've, they've closed it, and they are now in the J.H. Uh, Walker Lodge up here on Lincoln Avenue. It's corner of Lincoln and, um, Lincoln and Walnut. But there were these, you know, he was one of the old members back in that uh, Central City Lodge, uh, Jefferson Long. He might have even been in that Phoenix Lodge, which preceded it, number 11. There's some other graves that we've uh, missed. And in the interest of time, I'm just going to mention, you know, up on the top part in Walnut, you have Minnie Smith, who was the educator that started her own school, Beta Etta College. And uh, that's up on the top. Um, also, J.H. Walker, the Mason I referred to, is up on the top. And Reverend Thomas Turner, who was another Mason from 1844 to 1913, he lived and he was part of the Phoenix Lodge number 11. And he's up on the top. Uh, has a very interesting grave up there, Knights Templars on it. Educator Albert Howard uh, is buried up there. And um, now as we come around there, now a few other people, Lewis Persley is an architect. We passed his grave on the other side. He did work over at uh, Tuskegee right here is a gravestone of a gentleman whose last name is Chapman. His last name is Chapman, and he was a mason. Now you see how this oak tree has just absorbed his gravestone. And it, and it shows you the finality of death. You know, we live our lives, but once, you know, the heart stops, the brain waves stop, and we come to that period. And it's it. We've done what we've done, and the statement is, is finished. Now afterwards, the people can judge it, and they can weigh it, and hopefully we planted seeds in other people that uh, will carry on with our philosophy, carry on with our beliefs, our values. Uh, but when, once it's gone, once you're gone, you're gone. And that's just real. And, and the gravestone here, you see, as nature goes on, yep. continues, then this is, we're subject to what it is, you know? But it's, it's very interesting, you know, to see as time goes on. He's still here, mm -hmm. but he's, be, he's been absorbed into this oak tree, this mighty oak. You were looking for the greens. Is that the green that used to be at LA, uh, the Green Street School? Here? I don't know. I right. don't know. You know that other grave that has the same three links on it. Right. Uh -huh. it That's probably was a mason. mason. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. This is this is Douglas's uh, son, uh -huh. Charles Douglas Jr. Now you know they had he really had a lot of people. All their graves were really laid out. Yeah. Now this was the son, his son, and and uh, his wife, Charles Douglas Jr. Henrietta Douglas. Charles is you know now of course. Uh, the, the father who established the theater, his, his grave is a little further over. Uh, and we're going to look at that. But I just wanted to pause and, um, and check it out for everybody to look at. Yeah, you have to look at it. But this is the amazing and awesome Charles Henry Douglas' grave. The businessman who found the Douglas Theater had all the other businesses, the other uh, theaters, was it Roxy? Um, he had two, he had at least two theaters. I think it was three, the Douglas was located further down Broadway at first and then he moved it down to where it is now on Broadway, MLK. Uh, he had these businesses in the community, real estate. Uh, he had the bank, um, which was, um, I forget the exact name of it, but he was the president of his own bank. Uh, he had um, the hotel and he had the cafe. 
and uh, many of the great people, um, the great entertainers came through the Douglas get Theater, out, like Christina, um, Minnie Smith and, um, um, not Minnie Smith, I'm sorry, Bessie Smith and uh, Ma Rainey and Cab Calloway, Duke Ellington, uh, Ray Charles, as well as in the modern time, uh, Otis Redding. Uh, you know, Little Richard, James Brown, uh, all those people had associations with the Douglas, but he was born in 1870, five years after slavery ended in Macon, and uh, passed away in 1940. And uh, he also had associations with uh, Oscar Micheaux, um, the great uh, pioneer of black, uh, black pioneer of filmmaking. And uh, that, you know, he had his wife right with him, Fanny Douglas. She was always very faithful, powerful support. His daughter is still alive. And um, <clears throat> at, um, what is it, what is that nursing home? Uh, Laurel Bay Nursing Home. Uh, and then uh, a number of his relatives are buried. I think this was her, uh, her husband, because she's Lily Hatchett. Uh, and uh, the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Charles Henry Douglas, I think she must have died really early. Obviously, she died really early. But he took care of his people. And, uh, and of course, I think y'all may have checked out the Douglas House downtown uh, across from the hospital. Uh, but he's a great example of a businessman, fantastic example of a businessman. I think you're right about those grades because you see all those over there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. 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 So, uh. Right. Now, you know, is this Jerry B. Davis they were talking about last night? Yeah. Right. Okay, this is where he yeah, is. This is Megan, Megan Bell Davis. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. World He's the II. World War II hero. And, uh, and he was mad because they didn't put Megan Bell. Megan Bell was supposed to be there right now. And he uh, would do the oratorical contest for the youth mm -hmm. and give away a $50 prize, they said. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, sold war bonds in the community. Yeah, Jerry B. Davis, awesome, awesome, awesome. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that that uh, given the time, that concludes uh, our. Any any more information y'all had to share? Did they get it? Okay. Did y'all get the picture of L. H. Williams? L. H. Williams. Yeah, the school. From L. H. Williams School. Um. There's a man named Hasty. I don't. I forget his first name, but he had. Um, he he owned the property, and he okay. and 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 uh, so people were buying plots from him. Okay. I don't know if he was the originator, but he had a reputation for being very uh, wasteful or being a, a very poor caretaker. Gotcha. And it's the same thing. He owns now. Um, um, What's the one across the way where we go now? Well, Woodlawn. He owns that too. Um, so a lot of the people, the next generation, went over there with him. But at any rate, um, at a certain point, it was just so annoying. And it's like, you know, absentee landlord, all this kind of stuff. So the city finally um, found a way to, I guess, force him or purchase it from him or whatever the city of Macon. It's just a few, probably maybe in, in the past seven years, this has happened. Uh, and they gave the property to the Macon Cemetery Preservation Corporation for them to take care of. And they're trying. That's the group you see up there cutting. Mm -hmm. That's them. They're doing the best they can. So Lewis H. Williams is, again, one of the great ancestors here. Uh, L. H. Williams School. Right. 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 And, I, you know, I would heard that he was one of the first people to teach to teach people to read in, in uh, Macon back in the day. Now, he was born, of course, uh, three years after the end of slavery. Three years. And then he uh, passed away in 1929. I know he's the headmaster of the... Um, the School of the Blind. That's right, Academy of the Blind. That's right. And went there because his son <coughs> came in and filled his shoes after that. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hmm. And uh, so uh, one of our great leaders... Uh, L.H. Williams. The of the school. That's right. Wow. And the school has a lot of history and a lot of great alumnus, uh, alumni that have come through it. So, uh, 
Any other family members here? I believe this is his mother and then some of the other family members, I'm not sure, his wife. Uh, that's his wife. That's his wife. I'm sorry. That's his wife. And, um... Stella. Williams, which looks like his daughter, uh, 1902, or maybe his sister. Yeah. Uh, Lorenzo. Lorenzo. Williams. Williams, yeah. Robert Lorenzo Williams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 1844. Yeah. 1844. So that's probably uh, maybe his mother or his sister. And probably his mother. Maybe uh, if he was born in 1868. Huh? 1910? Mm -hmm. Where's father? We don't know. That might be oh, right here. This, this might be either. mother and father. Yeah. Because 1844 and he was born in 1868, so yeah, be right. she so potentially be could be his mother. Oh, look, because sometimes yeah. when I have the names, we can go back further. Yep. 1910, she was in the 1900 century. Yep, 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 yep. Excuse me. Yeah. Yep, so we good. Okay, all right. I want to get back so y'all's stuff. The lady there said this, there used to be like secret meetings. And, and it's probably, it's real overgrown. What? But it's probably, because I remember uh, a long time ago I saw a cave uh, when yeah. I was walking through here. The crafts came through here, didn't they? Where did the crafts come through? I don't know. I, there's some, somewhere that just, in my mind, when I've heard the stories, it's somewhere like down here where they would go to to get slaves out take them down to the river somewhere. I don't yeah. know if it was here in the cemetery or not. Possibly. Crafts? The William and Ellen Craft. William and oh, Ellen Craft. Wow, it was really? a fair-skinned white woman that dressed up like a man, a crippled man, and her husband, who was a dark-skinned, but they were blacks. And they drove the wagons and supposedly were able to move people out of the area. But there was some place like where the river connected or somewhere. Seems like it was either Somewhere here near the right. cemetery area, or somewhere where the creek comes through. Um, I never heard an account of how they, how that that happened, and they might have just gotten on the train and rode out because you know, his her husband was posing. Mm -hmm. he, she was posing as a as a um, as a uh, as like a, a slave owner. Invalid, like a, yeah, yeah, like mm -hmm. a city. So mm -hmm. she, they might have just gotten on a train and rode out. I don't what know. What a story. They did. A, it was a wagon. It was a wagon because they had to. A great story. The story is that she was very thoughtful and she had to come up with this plan before they left. And okay. so she cut her hair and disguised okay. herself as a man with glasses, okay. but then thought she'd have to sign stuff. Okay. And so they came up with this plan that she wrapped her head right. and put a sling on so that she would be uh, get away from having to be able to sign stuff. Right. And so when they were able, when they traveled, they were able to travel with her slave companion. Right. Her um, husband. But she was able to get away from this until they got far enough north, because they did eventually get to the trains and then eventually got north. Right. But they had developed this plan and set this plan in motion. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah, you know, sure it did. worked. Has they anybody done a film. short film about that? There's That'd a be. book that they've done on her. I know the Tubman has a copy of it. Thousand There's a book that he's written. Freedom. His writings, the, yeah, the husband's running writings. Running a thousand miles to freedom. But that yeah. could be a nice yeah. half hour mm -hmm. film. Should that really name has it? gone. Yeah. Um, I went last year, I went to the Craft Museum in Augusta. Mm. The lady, and I says, that name sounds familiar. It says she's from Macon. Mm. I says, well, tell me the story. Her parents thought so fondly of the Crafts that they named this woman, her middle name was Craft, mm. that they named her after. And she went on to inspire Mary McLeod Bethune and many of the others that came through her that, that, that circuit there. And they've got a, a Laney, Laney Craft. Lucy Craft. Lucy, Lucy Craft, Craft Laney, Laney. Yeah, yeah, there in Augusta. Wow. Yeah. That was just. Um, the roots come from the people that were here, which is just right. It was a yeah. much smaller world where it seemed like people were connected. Yes, yeah. so, what a story. Yeah, like, yeah, God, just... really interesting. But they were from here, Craft Street, where the where the garden is. Yeah. And then they Craft came Street, back to Georgia later Craft. on. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. They came back to Georgia mm -hmm. later on and started mm -hmm. school. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that down near Savannah. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. they they were incredible. They were incredible. Yeah. Well, I think she came Man, that's yeah, that's bold. That's that's it is bold. bold. That is yeah. like yeah. That's what I mean. That's espionage kind of stuff. Man. Yeah. I mean, that's a story. That's yeah. dressing But you up know, there. she was so driven. Yeah. Uh, she really was sick of slavery, 
And uh, she was that, she said she would not have her children grow up in slavery. She refused. And uh, so she was like, okay, even so I, I'll die trying. Them? They were you both know? on a weekend pass from their workers. Yeah. But the husband and wife were on a weekend pass. They took a long weekend pass. Oh, that's they how they did it. this plan yeah. and concocted this plan. And they learned to read and all that while they were gone. They were in England. They were in, mm -hmm. uh, I heard they even went to Africa. And, uh, and then they eventually came, made their way back to the United States. And it was interesting, in the newspaper, they were so angry uh, that they had escaped. And they were uh, talking about how she uh, hates that she, you know, she's suffering and she's having a bad time. And, and then she they sent wrote, back word they that, says, you oh, know, no, no. Nah. <laughs> oh, no, we're not. But keep it up. Keep yes, it up. Yeah. Keep, keep thinking. Yeah. Right. That's what they want people to think. And right. if you believe the media, right. even at that time, you would have thought, oh, they're so miserable. Right. Don't leave. Don't leave. Right. I'm telling no. you, this could, they be, wrote back this could and be a feature length film. Really. Oh, no it doubt about it. It could be like a Hollywood man. Absolutely. Absolutely. A screenplay. It's a fabulous. I mean, just the unexpected of what people were capable of. You know, the planning, the ingenuity, the thoughtfulness of having to plan out all of these things, even down to the disguise. These glasses cutting my hair, I can look like a man. And I don't but have I gotta to have sign. wrapped up, I can't sign. It's gotta be which arm, and this is whole, and then the balls to be able to just do it. That's, yeah, you know, it's one say, thing, we ought to do it. It's like, no, we're doing we it. We've got nothing that. to lose, we've got to, do, we've got to do this, and to do it and succeed, and go on, and then be able to write and tell about it. Mm -hmm. That's the piece of history to write and say this is what we did and how we did it and why we did it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just. I mean, I'm telling you, that's got all so the elements for a screenplay. True. It's got the risk, right and the risks keep getting higher and higher mm -hmm. and higher. <laughs> like we're we're planning to do this now, we're going to try to do it now. We're out of the country. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. What we're doing today is celebrating our seventh annual Pleasant Hill Reunion. I want to welcome you on behalf of Mr. Amir Hassan and the We Care Group, Captain Willie May and the Pleasant Hill Shalom Zone Group, and also for myself, Peter Gibbons, who's president of the Pleasant Hill Neighborhood Improvement Group. I want you to know a little bit about what we're all trying to do for Pleasant Hill and why we are here today. We want you to gather and talk with each other and renew old friendships and talk about what Pleasant Hill meant to you. Talk about what Pleasant Hill will mean to you because we are in the process of doing things to make Pleasant Hill better. We have the Shalom Zone that is dealing with obesity, development of the community, education. We're talking about the We Care group that has dedicated itself to dealing with uh, the Pleasant Hill uh, uh, Cemetery, which is Linwood Cemetery. I almost couldn't get it out. Uh, they were initially the people who uh, got together and, uh, and brought in reserves, so to speak, to, uh, to help clean up the cemetery. Once that happened, the Cemetery Preservation Corporation came in and took over and is heading that right now. Also, Pleasant Hill Neighborhood Improvement Group is working with the Georgia Department of Transportation on a mitigation project for improvements of Pleasant Hill because of the widening of Interstate I-75 and 16. I'd like to bring to your attention, to my right, there is a brown tent over there. If your people will stand up for one second. Those people are helping us put together the oral history of Pleasant Hill, as told by you, 
not someone else, by you, people of Pleasant Hill, and how you were affected by Pleasant Hill. The organization is New South Associates. The CEO is Mary Beth Reed, and her associate, Lorana Hughes. So I'd like for everybody, when you get a chance, to go by that table and to give your names, your phone numbers, so that we can interview you individually, so that we can get additional history of Pleasant Hill as told by you. We want to know about your families and what they did to help make Pleasant Hill what it was, what it is, and what it will be. Also, we'd like for everyone here, and this is very important, we'd like for everyone here to sign a sign-in list because we need to know how to contact you. We want to be able to let you know what's going on. We also want to hear from you your thoughts about how you want to see Pleasant Hill move forward. So we cannot do that. We cannot have full participation unless you yourselves join in. So let's make sure that before you leave today, if you're leaving in five minutes, go over there, go over to the main desk. Where's the main desk? Hello? The main desk is right behind me. The main desk is right behind me. It says Shalom, Pleasant Hill Shalom Zone. So make sure you all get over here to this desk to sign your name, give us your phone numbers, your addresses, and your uh, email addresses. Because we need that in order to keep you informed, and we also want you to keep us informed. We want to know what you're thinking, how you want to see Pleasant Hill move forward, and we want you to participate want you to be part of it. Okay? So today, enjoy yourselves. Make sure, make sure that you get over here and you speak to New South Associates so that we can get your recorded history. Make sure you get over here to this table, Pleasant Hills Shalom Zone, so that we have a way to contact you and you'll have a way to contact us. Enjoy your day. Thank you very much. And Pleasant Hill, give yourself a round of applause. Come on. Thank you very much.